Okay, so in this tutorial, what I want to do is extend our space frame analysis code so that we can build a better visualization of our axial forces over in Blender. So we're picking up pretty much where we left off at the end of the space frame analysis course. And so you'll recall when we finished up that course, we had basically this code here, which was a 3D space frame analysis, and we had included self weight in the analysis. And that analysis notebook essentially determined all of our axial forces and our deflections for our structure. Now you'll recall as well that this structure actually started off over in Blender. We modeled the structure in Blender. We exported the data defining that structure into our Jupyter Notebook from Blender, did the analysis here, and then we jumped back over or we exported data out of this notebook that we could bring back into Blender so that we could get a better idea of the deflected shape in Blender. Because although this is a plot of the deflected shape and there's some functionality in here so we could scale it, we can rotate and elevate our view so we can change the view we have on the structure. It's not a very easy way to, uh, to investigate the deflection of the structure. And similarly, this plot of axial forces has the same level of uh, functionality in terms of orientating our view, changing our orientation. Um, but again, it's not a very easy way to visualize uh, the axial loads and so in this tutorial we're going to export some data out of this notebook essentially the axial force data we're going to bring that over into our blender file and then we're going to write a script in blender that essentially rebuilds a mesh version of our structure so rather than a line diagram version of our structure an actual mesh with thickness and depth um, and then colors that mesh based on the axial force and so if I show you what the end result will ultimately be at the end of this if we jump over to blender so here we are over in blender this was the original structure you'll see over my outliner here we've got um, we've got the analyses that we completed previously in the course but this was the original structure that we exported essentially over to our notebook and did the analysis and then when we imported it back in what did we have well we could we basically import if I leave the original structure and then I highlight the self weight plus imposed loading um, so this was the analysis and this was our deflected shape and so this was the extent of our data visualization in Blender previously. We could see the original structure and then a line diagram of the deformed structure. So no, no idea of axial force magnitudes or anything like that. So the extra step that we're going to implement now, if I get rid of that guy, uh, and in fact let's get rid of that guy as well. What we're going to do now is build a script that allows us to build this guy here. So this again is the original structure, um, but now we have, you'll notice that we have actual actual mesh. So we have, if I go into edit mode here, yeah, so here we are in edit mode. You can see that the individual members are no longer individual edges or individual lines. They're actually they're actually mesh objects with some thickness and some depth. And so if we want to, for example, understand what are the actual forces that go with this, we're going to write our code in such a way that the material that defines the color of an individual member will also contain the force in that member. So if I want to know the actual magnitude of the force in this blue member here, if I go into edit mode, uh, let me see, go into face select mode, viewport shading and over into, let me see, let's try solid view. And let me go into face select, select that face. And now if I go over to my materials, I can see that the material that I have highlighted here um, is material 800, so it was the 800th material generated, and it, within that uh, generation process, I've also assigned the axial force to the material. So I know there's 80 kilonewtons in that member, and of course that works for any member I choose. So I can select this guy here, and we've got a, an axial force of negative 12 kilonewtons, which means it's 12 kilonewtons in compression. And so in that way, you can go through your structure and find out what are the actual forces. So let's do a bit more of an interesting one. This guy here, um, what's he? So that is minus 647 so 647 kilonewtons in compression so it's just an, an extra little way to visualize your structure uh, it makes for uh, it's great for doing presentations or where you want to present your structure in a more presentable fashion and um, generate some nice renderings using blender all right so let's uh, that's enough of the demo let's get on with it now and uh, start off in a fresh blender file Okay, so here we are over in a fresh Blender file. I've deleted all of the default elements out of the scene and I'm ready to start building. So 
When I'm writing this code, I want to be writing it and applying it as I go to a much, much simpler structure because that's going to be the easiest way to uh, to basically troubleshoot as you're, as you're developing. I don't want to start writing a code and basing it and testing it as I develop on a really large structure because it's just going to take longer to run. It's going to be more tedious to work with. So let's give ourselves a very simple structure here to work with. So uh, we'll start off. I'll just uh, I'll add in a default cube. And so you'll see on the bottom left, I've got my screen cast keys on so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to add in a cube and I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to delete X to delete and delete all of the faces. Now I'll only delete faces. Um, let me see. I'll hit one on the number strip at the top. Now I'll hit two. Go into edge select and delete these bottom edges. Uh, let me see. Edges. Okay, great. Now let's see. Um, tab again to go into edit mode. Hit one for vertex select. Grab the top vertices shift selecting and hit G constraint to the Z axis and type in one. Okay. So now let me see, let's imagine this is some simple uh, cross braced structure. So I'm going to put some cross bracing in this thing, right? So let's go with uh, filling an edge here. So selecting two vertices and hitting F to fill an edge between them, rotating around with the middle mouse button, go same again. So let me see. So this is basically, there's, you know, it's just a little test structure something very very simple to work with and so let's do that and do that all right that's fine let's hit one to go to front view so one on the number pad on the right of your mouse of your keyboard alt a to deselect everything box or b to box select grab the bottom vertices now i want to turn on my x-ray x-ray vision i suppose you could say so that when i select i select everything in front and behind so you can see i've only selected the front elements here now, this is always my issue trying to find where, where is that option? Ah, okay, so here it is here. So this button here, top right hand corner, toggle X-ray. So if I hit that, go into front view now, all day to deselect everything and B to box select, click and drag. You see, I've selected all four vertices. That's just a personal preference. I like to work in that mode. So let's go and hit seven on the number pad for top view. Uh, we'll scale these, these vertices out. So I'll hit S to scale. Shift Z to scale in every axis except the Z axis and I'll just click and drag and pull these guys out something like that. Okay, so this is the structure we're going to work with. All right, tab out of edit mode, back into object mode. Okay, there we have it. All right, so the only other thing I want to do is take this structure. If I go into front view, you'll notice that it is below, uh, below the ground plane shall we say. So if we take the Z axis as uh, the vertical axis at Z equal to zero, that can be our ground plane. So I want to just raise the structure above the ground plane. So let's uh, hit G, Z and one. And now it's essentially sitting on the ground. All right. So what I want to do next is export the data that defines this structure. So the plan here is going to be We've built a little structure. I'm going to export the data defining that structure. I'm going to run that data through our analysis code. That's going to generate some output data, some results data. We're going to dump that onto our desktop. We can then bring, so that's going to be the axial force information essentially. We're then going to be able to bring that back into Blender and then we can start writing up this script that's going to rebuild our structure for us and color it in based on the axial forces. So let's go ahead and just export this. So again, this is all just uh, what we did within the course. So there's nothing new here. There's no code to explain. We've explained it all previously. So with the structure selected here, I, you'll notice I have a little, um, I have a little additional window I've just created up here. Um, and that's switched to be a text editor window. So I've made a text editor window, which means I can just come in here and press play with the model export script selected. So I'll hit play. That's going to export the vertices and member definitions onto the desktop. We'll come in and let's export the restraint vertices. So if I tab into edit mode, I'll select the vertices that I want to be restrained. And so I've written the code such that these are restrained in the X, Y, and Z direction. So I'll just run that and that will export that information. And then we'll select this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And we'll imagine that we're applying some forces. So I'll hit export forced vertices and we'll run that. So that's now dumped the data, all the data I need essentially to do a, an analysis of this structure over in our Jupyter notebooks. Let's jump over there now and uh, basically just run the code to generate the axial forces within this structure. All right, so here we are over in the uh, the, the final code that we finished up our space frame analysis course with. And I wanna just change a few things. So I've set the self-weight to false because I don't need to take self-weight into account in this particular analysis. And I've set the 
force axis to be the x-axis and so essentially what we're saying here is that we're going to apply a force of negative 1000 newtons so in the negative x axis direction to all of the vertices that we selected in our blender model and said were forced vertices okay so i can run this now and it will analyze our structure for us okay so the the margins are all set for that much larger structure we saw previously so we can just uh change that to one and we get we get our structure now let me see ah it's still below the ground plane it's below the ground plane because i haven't used the most up-to-date data that i just generated and put on my desktop i need to take the the data that we just exported from blender and i actually need to move it over into the folder that's essentially so it's sitting beside this notebook so let me go and do that quickly and rerun it and i've just rerun it again and i've just realized that it's still below the ground plane and i know why that is it's because i never applied my transforms over in blender so let me go back over to blender and do that quickly back over here in blender with my structure selected if i go although the structure looks like it's sitting on the ground plane if i go in and hit n on my keyboard and go into item you can see here that z the transform uh, is showing one and what i actually need to do here is set or rather apply all my transforms so it's shift a not shift a control a control a and apply all transforms you can see my z goes to zero so what that means now is you can see that the the little the little yellow dot here it used to be up here at one now it's back down here at, at zero uh, with z equal to zero and so what was happening was previously all of the coordinates were having an offset of one one meter essentially applied to them whereas now when, when we export them again they're going to be in the positions that we're seeing them in here without having that one meter offset applied to all the coordinates so let's just go through that process again with the model selected i'll hit uh, play to export the model top right hand corner here uh, let's go into export restraint vertices and let me see well that should all be fine actually because the restrained vertices that's just vertex numbers that are being exported so that won't have changed and the uh, forced vertices won't have changed so the only thing I actually really needed to re-export was the model export which has the coordinate location data in it so with all of that done let's uh, take that data off the desktop put it into the folder beside the Jupyter Notebook and run it again. Okay, excellent. So I've run it again. I've changed my Z margin to be one, the same as my X and Y, and we can see our structure as we'd expect. So if we keep scrolling on down here, uh, the next thing I'm going to see is my axial force plot. So let me take that and change that to one as well. Okay, and we can see the axial force distribution we'd expect, because remember these top four nodes, if I just rotate this around a little bit, and change the elevation a little bit something like that so these top four nodes had a force applied in the negative x direction which means it would be a force pointing to the bottom right hand corner of the screen if you like and so of course that would put all these members on the right hand side into tension and all the member members on the left hand side a rod or reverse they put the members on the right hand side into compression and the members on the left hand side which is blue here into tension okay so that's all fine and um, incidentally while i'm here you'll notice that we're using a function that has been deprecated so diverging norm is no longer is no longer being used within the most recent version of matplotlib it's been replaced by essentially an identical function with a different name called two slope norm now i use the word identically identical loosely there i don't know if it's identical but the end result is it does the same thing so if we want to get rid of that we can just expose our code here uh, for plotting and let me see where is it somewhere in here i'm using there it is, where is it there it is diverging norm let's go back up diverging norm we don't want diverging norm we want to slope norm run that again hide the code again and we can see that that error has gone away and let's change that back i should really just leave that or change the default to one uh, the next thing we have is our displacements again let's just change that to one and scale it up so we can actually see the deflection and let's rotate around let me see are we seeing any appreciable deflection here we're not seeing a significant deflection because the magnitude of the forces is quite small okay so we're not, let's just ramp up the load here uh, just so we can see a deflection that uh, that we can actually see after we amplify it so we'll run that again 10x the load come back down to our deflected shape just change that let's alter the view slightly so we can see it a bit better and let's scale up that deflection see what we see okay excellent so we're starting to see the deflection 
It's not massive, but we can see it. So essentially, there's nothing new here. We've we've done all this and we've talked through how to write and build all this code already. What I want to do now is talk you through this additional bit of code that is new that we haven't written previously. So I've kind of already written it here to save time, um, but I'll walk you through it bit by bit. So uh, line by line here, right? Line two. Um, well, all we're doing here is defining a color map, essentially a color scale. Um, and we did the exact same thing to generate this this well, this color scale on the right hand side here. So um, that's essentially the exact same line of code pinched from above. Um, now the color scale that we have been using up until now in this particular course is called seismic. It's that one that goes from red to blue and passes through white at the midpoint. Um, I kind of think a different color scale makes for a better image. And so I've changed that to be jet. So jet goes from well, you'll see it, but it goes from, what's it go from red to blue, but it passes through yellow. It doesn't go through white. It goes through a further range of colors. You can Google matplotlib um, color maps and you'll see all the different options and all of their different names. Um, so that's that's the first change I've made. So I've said, I've just commented out the uh, seismic and I've instead used jet on the little underscore or here just reverses the colors in the, in the color scale because I want my blue to be, uh, let me see, I want blue to be positive, which indicates tension, and I want red to be negative, which indicates compression. All right, the next thing we're doing again is pinching some code we've written previously above. Uh, we're essentially building this normalization, uh, which allows us basically uh, to normalize our data around a central point. Okay, so that's our two slope norm again. And so we feed it in the minimum value in our data range, the maximum value in our data range, and then the center point. So this allows us to take a value of axial force, normalize it, and then feed that normalized value into our color map, which allows us to basically get a color back out that corresponds to that axial force. All right, so next what I'm doing down here is just basically defining a container. Uh, then we're going to cycle through each of our elements and we're going to generate a color, right? So let's think about this bit by bit, right? So this bit here is just the axial force for the current member, right? That we've already calculated. I'm feeding that force into norm here. Remember this normalization function essentially takes in a raw number value uh, and then it normalizes it against this scale that is based around zero between this minimum value, this maximum value, but based around zero. So we're taking a axial force, feeding it into this normalization function. And once we've got a normalized value, right, we can take that normalized value, this bit here, feed it into the color map. And that essentially gives us back out a color using this jet uh, color scale. Right, so that's basically going to be an RGB value. Uh, it's actually RGB and an alpha value. So four numbers essentially that define the color uh, for the current member based on its axial force. And then I'm just adding to that because I, I also want to know what is the value of axial force. And so I'm just appending on, essentially that's what's happening here. I'm appending on the axial force. So if I was to actually go ahead and just print, just to show you what it is we end up with, uh, with member, color. So let's print that. So what are you seeing? So for each of our members, right, you've got an, an or value, a uh, red value, uh, G green, or G B and B blue, and then alpha, the alpha is set to one. And so there's no transparency with these colors. And then the last number here is the actual value of axial force, which generated this or G B value. So this is the data that Blender is going to take in and use to color our members within our structure. This is the key thing. And then this is just our standard boilerplate export code. So I'm taking, um, well, I'm appending the the member color, the thing I just generated for each member, I'm appending it or dumping it into our bucket of colors. And then I'm just exporting that bucket of colors, which is essentially all of this data here out onto the desktop. And um, this is my file path. You'll need to change that to match your file path. Um, and I'm putting it in a CSV folder called member hyphen color dot CSV. Okay, so that's now sitting on a CSV file on my desktop. Now we can jump back over to Blender and we can basically pull that data into Blender and actually start writing the uh, the script that's going to build our 3D structure, our colored in 3D structure for us.